Well, guys, the OOTP 22 beta came out today, and of course, me being the OOTP extremist that I am, I had to get it. So here we are with the brand new game, and today I'm going to be going over a lot of the new features that are involved, primarily with the main game, but also a little bit with Perfect Team as well. So we're going to hop right into a game that I created, and uh, there's a lot of stuff I'm going to be going over, from player ratings to settings changes to new additions and just about everything you could possibly think of. There's a lot of really cool things here to talk about. So first we're going to hit the settings. And there's not really anything different here, uh, to my knowledge. I do believe that some of the things on the right side are new changes, but I haven't really had an opportunity to look at them too much yet, as I have barely touched the game so far. Uh, I'm pretty sure this page is the exact same. But now you get to the AI settings, and things are really interesting. So before, there were uh, five trade modes. Favor, or very easy, easy, neutral, hard, and very hard, or something like that. And uh, basically, they were all very similar in terms of what kind of trades you could make and what times of offers you'd be receiving. But now, there is a slider a lot like the things you're going to see in... Um, in your coaching settings and strategy, so you can adjust your trade difficulty to a lot more settings. Now, something else I've noticed is doing a rough run through with harder trade difficulties, it makes a huge difference on the kinds of offers you're going to receive. Uh, now, playing very hard is honestly quite major league realistic. It's very difficult to make a trade you're going to win. You have to give up huge pieces in order to get uh, pretty much anything at all. It's very rare for you to make a trade that you're like, yes, this was an absolute robber. You have to really want the players you are trying to trade for, and they better not be stars because you're not going to have a shot at picking up any of them. Now, of course, the trading preference from favor veterans to uh, favor prospects is going to be the same. You're going to see extreme differences in the types of players that you're going to be asked for. Uh, because it gets really screwed with the mechanics, regardless of what your preferences are, I would recommend going more than a couple ticks over one direction, unless it's to create some kind of league environment that you are looking for. Ratings weights are the same and uh, all that. Now we're going to head onwards into our league settings. So functions, I believe, are about the same. League and teams, about the same. Uh, rules, just looking through here real quick. I don't see anything that's too different. For financials, the only thing I noticed that was significantly different is that the qualifying offer value has been changed. So the amount of money that you are going to have to give a player in the qualifying offer is higher than it was in past versions of the game. For options here, I don't believe there's anything different as well. Uh, under players, the big difference I noticed, and I'm not actually sure that this is the case, is that scouting discoveries have been lowered. The numbers that were here used to be higher, I believe, and uh, now they are definitely not uh, the same as they were before. With historical, I'm pretty sure everything there is the same. But then you get to stats and AI, you scroll down on the right side. Now, most of this is about the same. Nothing is significantly changed. But these are very different. The ratings on the right side over here um, that essentially factor into what your league is going to look like in terms of strategy and outcomes. Primarily outcomes, though. Uh, it's very different. Before, these were all very close to one. Uh, you didn't really see much difference. And they've also added a couple new things in, like fielding ground ball double plays, which was just double plays before, and fielding line drive double plays, also just a part of double plays. Outfield assists, I do not believe, was a thing before. Uh, base running percentage, do not remember that being there either. So a lot of really cool stuff that they've added in to make you have a greater amount of control over your league. This is something a lot of people are going to miss, and a lot it's something that a lot of people didn't even really touch, including me before, but it's really cool. And if you're trying to adjust stuff or make your league a certain way, this is a great way to do it. 
And down here, these numbers have been changed as well from what they previously were. I'm pretty sure these are also in part to account for adjustments to the game engine. Um, they have stated that they made a few changes to the way that things are run. Also, just for a second here, I'd like to take a moment and point out how cool the user interface is. It looks outstanding. The color scheme is great. The new um, things here are outstanding. And settings used to be an ugly bag of crap before, but they have cleaned it up and made it look just as good as the rest of the game uh, with the background and everything. And I believe it's much more accessible as well. So all overall, a lot of really great stuff uh, to be excited about. And I go to your managers thing. Uh, first of all, news and mail is already better. You don't get notifications for bl your team and blank made a trade if you were the team that pulled the trade off. So that's cool. We also have here uh, a couple of new settings on the right side where uh, I'm trying to look for it here. Maybe I'm imagining this. I do believe I'm imagining it. Yeah, so uh, I think the thing I was looking for doesn't actually exist. Just ignore me. I am still learning this game. Uh, I've literally only been playing it for a handful of time. But you go down to your personnel and you'll see that on the major league level, there is a brand new first base and third base coach. And there's a brand new staff roles tab. This is really cool, by the way. So in here, you could see staff cohesion, which is basically how well your staff is going to work together. This will affect how influential they are in player development and how effective they are at their jobs overall. And uh, yeah, really interesting addition to the game. We also are allowed to now give individual coaches the ability to teach individual skills to players. So catcher defenses or catcher. I'm, I'm not sure if it's just defense or all of their skills. You set somebody to teach them. For the infielders, I'm again not sure if it's just defense or all skills. You set somebody to teach them. And for teaching running, this I believe is base running for everybody. So what you want to do is hire different scouts or uh, different coaches who are good at different things and then have those handle different player attribute so for example let's go down to available personnel page which is also revamped and we'll get to this in a minute you want to go by coaching scroll to the very top to get the best players and let's say you want to find somebody really good to keep teach your catchers so hey here we go we've got this braid becker guy uh he is outstanding at teaching everybody actually so that's very convenient we just sign him and hey he can teach our catchers and it looks like he's probably going to be teaching uh, two out of three for the catchers infield and outfield since nobody's even close to him here. Uh, and as for our other staff, I do not know. We're going to definitely need somebody else to teach running. Probably going to be this Anthony Sanders guy. Uh, we might also hire somebody else there. And we're going to need somebody else to step up in the infield or outfield as well. Probably the outfield, because that is the least important area to uh, worry about. So we're going to head back to available personnel. And now we want our other coaches. So we need obviously one guy to work well with running. So we've got this, uh, this group of coaches who are really good with the running aspect uh, of teaching. So this Raul Ortiz guy, he's first of all good at in-game running, which means that he's going to help your base runners make better decisions actually in the game. And he also seems to have better development influences across the board than everybody else. So we would, in this case, hypothetically hire him to teach our running, be a positive uh, influence on managing the running in the game, and also be able to overall influence our players. Now for the last thing, we want uh, somebody who can really help our players develop. So we want somebody who is either going to teach hitting or pitching or mechanics or handles aging. It'll all depend on what your team is and what you need. And it'll also depend on what the rest of your staff looks like. 
So let's go with somebody who teaches hitting. We've already got Ryle Ortiz, so we'll switch over to pitching instead. Okay, so now we've got a new list of guys, and this Robert Ellis guy, he seems like he's actually pretty good at a couple of other things as well. So it wouldn't be a terrible idea to hire him as our final coach to uh, give our team a little bit of a boost there. And yeah, so there's a lot of things that go into this system. There's a lot to learn, including on my end. I'm not going to tell you guys anything definitively, but that's just the base strategy that I'm going with at this moment. I will obviously experiment and try to figure out better ideas, uh, but that's what I've got for you at the t moment. Um, we also have actions, so it looks like there isn't actually anything new under the actions tab, but you can now find all of your MLB uh, coaches under the uh, under this staff roles tab as well, which is pretty convenient. Now, I suppose since it is what we were just talking about, the most logical thing to do is talk about the new staff overhaul that we've got. So first of all, you pop into the editor over here for the staff, and you have a whole bunch of new things on here that were not there before. You go into their profile, and now you've got three attributes. Rather than just show you the most relevant thing to whatever staff you're looking at, you get to see their managing attributes, their strategy attributes, and their ratings, which give you basically everything you need to know uh, about that staff. So you can easily figure out, okay, well, as pitching coach, how are they going to do as a manager? This manager, how would they do as a pitching coach without actually having them set at that rating? And you can also see more clearly and easily their overviews, and I believe you can sort by them as well. And of course, you can um, sort here by whatever you want. So if you want somebody, who, if you have an older team, uh, a group of veterans, and you're looking for coaches who will help those guys continue to have long and successful careers, you will probably want guys who can handle aging better. Um, if you are looking to, if you've got a really terrible team and you're looking to change it up, try to get some uh, pop and some production out of nowhere, you might want coaches with more mechanics. And if you've got a whole bunch of young players, you're looking to develop some prospects into uh, talented quality major leaguers, you might want guys with higher development. If your team is struggling, uh, at making smart base running decisions, you might want guys with better base running. Although I, I'm going to be flat with you here, guys. Base running does not matter. It, it barely matters. Unless you've got somebody who's literally butchering your team. And then you could just say your base running is extremely conservative. It's barely going to affect your outcomes. Getting your players and getting them developed is far more important. I would not really recommend prioritizing this. Teaching running, again, base running, not so important. But if you are trying to get guys to improve their speed, you can hire one of those guys. Outfield, infield, and catching. At this moment, I still believe that this is just defense, but um, even if it is just defense, that's going to be hugely important. You will definitely want the best possible coaches for teaching each of these three things to your team uh, so that you can actually um, you can have the best possible defense. Pitching and hitting, obviously, that's going to depend on do you need your pitchers to improve? Do you need your hitters to improve? Are your guys in their prime so you don't need to worry about it so much? Are your guys aging so now you need to keep them talented uh, in their post-prime? And the new filters are obviously great. You can, of course, customize actual filters. There's a lot more options to choose from than there were before in the actual filters uh, tab as well. If you head to Scout Ratings, I don't have a filter on, do I? What the heck? Hmm. Ah, uh, okay, so you want to go to All Personnel. Huh. Oh, I think I see what the problem is. I'm not actually uh, a GM. I believe. So it doesn't look like I have any scouts here. Uh, all coaches, that's the problem. Only one scout. Okay, so there's something a little bit wonky with this game. But we could just ignore that. Uh, yeah, this is really weird. 
What the heck? Okay, anyways. Uh, weirdness aside, there are a lot of really cool things you can sort from. Um, obviously, for scouts, you're going to want highly favored tools, guys. So this Bill Castro out of this list would probably be your best option as a scout. You can see his scouting preferences right here, although he is, of course, a pitching coach and not actually a scout. So, uh, yep. Highly favored tools, I believe, is a little bit less important in the game than it was before. I think scouting overall is a little bit tougher, uh, but the highly favorability and favorability is a little bit less trashy than it was in previous games. That's just my first impression. I'm not actually certain about that, and I would obviously recommend going highly favored tools still. But yeah, uh, also looks a like it's a lot easier to tab between different things uh, now that they have added it and made pretty much everything that's important, easy to get to in one single space. Trying to think about other things. We've got ballpark settings now. The new 3D ballpark construction kit. Uh, it's not technically new, but it is totally revamped. Lots of cool stuff. I haven't even touched this yet, guys. And there is so much good things you can do with this. Also, really good-looking ballparks. I also haven't played games manually, but they look absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I would at least recommend taking a look at this kind of stuff, even if you're not interested, simply because there is so much you can do. Now, of course, the thing that you are probably most interested in hearing from me directly, since it is the thing that I uh, do the best, is player ratings. So, who is good in OOTP 22? Well, guys... Uh, there are not nearly as many standouts at most positions as there were before. But, uh, before we actually hop into most players, I've got to say that you can acquire both of your catchers in a single trade in the new version of the game. Now that he's with the Indians, Austin Hedges actually is an even better fielder than he was before. He's about the same caliber of hitter. Strikes out a little more, but overall similar production. He's still a captain, but his arm is actually five grade higher. Guys, in case Austin Hedges was not broken enough and out of the park 21, he's even better now. I cannot overstress how important it is to trade for Hedges. Get Hedges. He's your starting catcher. Now, do it. Do it. Roberto Perez can easily be your number two catcher. Right now, I'm slotting him in provisionally as the second best Third best, my bad, catcher in the game. Uh, I'm having Vasquez one slot higher than he is right now. Also, outstanding defense. This is the profile Hedges had last year defensively. Uh, also a captain. His hitting is probably slightly better than Hedges, but overall it doesn't make much of a difference. He's more expensive as well, but he can be your number two catcher, and I think you're going to win more games if he is, so I would recommend that. However, most other positions, uh, there were clear standouts like Andrelton Simmons at shortstop. Uh, Billy Hamilton was a lot of people's go-to center fielders. Those guys do not exist anymore, partially because those guys specifically got nerfed. Oh, Evan White uh, as your go-to left fielder. But yeah, so we have a lot across the board. Ratings are lower. So you used to have some ridiculous guys in OTP 21, like Vlad Jr. just had his off-the-charts contact and power and whatever. He does not anymore. Wander Franco used to have that ridiculous contact and an overall ridiculous profile. Well, this is what he looks like now. So, yeah, everybody's worse than they were before. Uh, Franco's better outside of the contact, but obviously the contact is much lower. I think they have pretty much just put players in a position where they are not very good overall. Now, you've got a couple of guys still that are uh, usable going into the future. Like, Juan Soto is just so freaking good that he's going to be good no matter what. Jeff McNeil, actually ridiculously good in OTP 22. One of the best hitters you're going to find. Uh, there's a handful of other players like that, but generally... And it's very top-heavy, too. So the guys like this... I'd say probably the best all-around hitter in the game is still Vlad Jr. If you take him up to his full potential, Wander Franco's better. Wander Franco's the best hitter in OTP 22, and you cannot dispute it. But uh, for 
guys on MLB rosters right now, Vlad Jr., probably the best hitter in the game. He doesn't even come close to what you were looking at for even just the second tier players in 21. Um, in my opinion, one of the most problematic things in OTP is there is a ridiculous gap between what live players look like and what OTP generated players look like. So you go out a year or two and all of a sudden your t rosters are just flooded with international amateurs and scouting discoveries and draft prospects. Forget them. The scouting discoveries are what's good with the top uh, guys. There's no reason to care about the draft or picking up minor leaguers aside from Franco because you just wait five years, pick up all the top tier young players, international players and you're going to have a ridiculously stacked team probably about twice as good as you could possibly build in a live roster uh so they did not fix the problem they made it worse which is kind of cringe but um uh, it will just deal with it so i think live starts overall still great but fictional probably a legitimate alternative given how weird live starts are going to be to play. But as for the trade AI itself, let's quickly act as the Diamondbacks here. It's much better. You used to be able to make ridiculously broken trades before. You can't anymore. Um, they have made it so that there are top players who are almost impossible to acquire like Wander Franco. You have to give up a ton of players to get them. And then even just lower tier players who are pretty meaningful, still difficult to pick up. They have, are much better at valuing players. Uh, reliever, le, le, relief prospects are still way too easy to trade for. But uh, you can see here that they clearly value their top players properly. Yeah, they're not even willing to trade most of their guys here. Um. Yeah, you've got Dylan Cease, very good, and all they're willing to take is Zach Gowan. Before this year, you would probably have seen a very long list of players pop up there that the White Sox would be willing to take for Dylan Cease or other guys. That's gone. They've really improved the trade AI. Um, I still think it's got a ways to go. There are plenty of ways you can abuse it, especially if you know the game inside and out and know what type of player is going to work well. But uh, again, I think that combined with the adjustments that they made to try to balance out the hitting ratings are going to really make this game feel more realistic and much less easy to abuse. Especially for those of you who do not play this game nonstop, it's going to be a lot cleaner of an experience. And there's a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, overall, first impressions are outstanding of franchise mode. Uh, there's a lot of things that are improved, even if it may not seem like it to you. Get in, play it, and then just just notice how different it is. And if you don't notice, that's fine too. Uh, it's if you're not really playing this game a ton, it you may not seem like a huge difference, but there is a lot of really cool additions to the game. Uh, overall, I'm gonna say relieve reliever quality is much higher in this game than it was before. You've got a lot of ridiculous relievers and a whole bunch of guys who are capable of filling middle or back end roles in huge amounts, much higher quality than there ever was. Um, hitter ratings down across the board, starting pitcher ratings down across the board as well. And again, once you get into those fictional players, then you'll start seeing some ridiculously talented players pop up. I'm still in the early stages of identifying what type of player I'm going to be able to acquire, who's a good value and whatnot, but uh, it's it's definitely different than it was before. Now for perfect team, obviously the biggest thing with perfect team is perfect draft. So this is a really cool game mode that they have added for OTP 22. You can only do one at a time right now, but they're fun. So you essentially sign up for the draft, you hop into the set rosters thing, and then you get to go through rounds and choose players from a list. The one downside is if you get trashy players, you're pretty much screwed. But if you get really good players, then there's almost no way you can lose. And overall, it's really fun to build your teams. There's a combination of team building strategy through drafts, 
So if you're familiar with similar games, that'll give you a bit of an advantage. And there's also knowing what players are good. So I'm going to go through here, look at each of the players I've got, and I will take one. Probably Jim Edmonds. He's a great center fielder. So I've got Jim Edmonds, Sammy Sosa, Joe Gordon, Kid Nichols, Tommy Bridges, and Roger Peckinpah. So a lot of Hall of Famers right here. And uh, you can right-click them and open their player profile to see a more in-depth, detailed um, analysis. But I am pretty sure I'm taking Jim Edmonds. He's a great center fielder with a very good bat relative to the other players who's going to anchor my uh, rotation. Something I've noticed is it makes more sense to take batters early than it does to take pitchers since batters are going to anchor your team every day. Pitchers you only get every now and then. And, of course, getting defensive guys is going to help your pitching anyway. So, I like this Emmett Hendrick or Hydrick guy, but I do not like that he is not a great center fielder, and I already have Jim Edmonds. So, we've also got a couple of other interesting players here. Dwight Evans in right field. Okay. Uh, I don't really like any of these players too much, honestly. This is one of the few situations where I'd consider drafting a pitcher early, but I think I'm still probably going to take George Springer, just play him in right field and use him as my backup center fielder. So we'll do that. You get one perfect, two diamonds, I think like six or eight golds, and then silvers, bronzes, and five irons. Okay, we've got Jared Kelenic here, future legend. He looks really good. It's too bad I just took Springer. I mean, I guess he'd probably be a DH anyway. He doesn't fit too well. We got Matthew Allen, George Harper. Another guy who uh, would probably be a good... Ooh! Ooh! I think I found my guy. 104 catcher ability. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I like Phil Rizzuto a lot. Honestly, it's a tough decision. Phil Rizzuto is clearly a card who's just on the border, being a perfect. He's got great shortstop defense. But Charles Johnson with that catcher ability, it, you can't top that. I wouldn't judge you guys for taking Rizzuto there. I mean, I honestly consider it myself, but yeah. I love me some catcher ability. Nick Madrigal, broken in this game. So he is going to be one of my picks. I don't even need to think about it. So let's see here. I've got center field, right field, and catcher filled at this point. Chris Davinsky, one hit wonder. Huh. Okay, how's this left fielder? Do not really like him. I do not like those uh, gap power first guys. Okay, I like this Garth Jorg guy. I'm thinking he might be on the table. Bobo Newsom, he's a two-way, isn't he? No, I must be thinking of someone else. We got Eloy Jimenez here. I think I got to go with Madrigal and um, this Eeyore guy. There's really no other alternative to me. All right, Ryan Villaid. They must have dug deep to find a Rockies player. Jackson Rutledge, definitely an interesting prospect for the Nationals. Lots of really cool players, by the way, in the perfect draft. Definitely a lot of really interesting history here. And, of course, future with some of those guys. It's too bad Lindor isn't a better fielder. He's a really nice hitting shortstop. But I think we're probably going to take our first baseman here in this guy. And how is Trot Nixon? He might be usable. I don't know about Trot Nixon. Frankie Hayes has to. There's no way. How how did they even justify having a catcher that bad defensively? I'm not entirely sure who I want to take here. I think I'm probably going to end up taking... Gullet to anchor my rotation, even though I'm not a huge fan of him. Actually, does Valade have ratings at position other than third? He does, but I don't really like it. We could also try to roll with Lindor at shortstop. He 
isn't the worst option. I mean, I guess worst case scenario, we can stick him at DH. He is a pretty good hitter. So I will take Lindor here. Okay. Another first baseman. I actually like this guy even better than the last one, so I wouldn't mind sticking one of them at DH. That guy's pretty interesting. Lots of speed on him. Clyde Angle. Maybe a left fielder for us there. Freddie Parent. Classic from OTP20. Paul DeLoca, Miguel Batista. Ooh, he's actually pretty solid. Gary Lucas, Bob Horner. Manny Machado is a shortstop. Classic shortstop, Manny Machado. I do believe I'm taking Dan McGann here. And honestly, I will probably take Clyde Angle as well. I'm not in love with his batting profile, but... We do need a left fielder, and I'm not a fan. Uh, you know what? I actually do like this Red Lucas guy quite a bit. He's not a bad hitter either. He could probably step in if needed at a certain position. We do still need a left fielder, though. That's for sure. But we do also need more pitching and the fact that I just took my first pitcher in round six or whatever. Some more really interesting players here. They, I have noticed, have a lot of really higher stuff, lower movement guys. Uh, you have fewer truly balanced players in the game overall. So it's going to be a little bit more challenging to get your ideal player. You're going to have to work with uh, whatever you are given. Bob Boone, I, this could be my backup catcher right here. It's a little early to take one, but at the same time, uh, in this tournament type, backup catchers actually do make quite a difference, and Bob Boone is certainly one of the best you can get. There's Jim Delsing. He does not have ratings at other positions. Roy Foster has ratings at both corners, so I think I will take these two guys and let them fill my backup spots. I still need a utility infielder, but otherwise I think I've got this team pretty set. And you can see how hitter heavy I am. Right now, this is the strategy I'm running with. I'm going very heavy hitters early on, and then just filling in the pitchers later when I get the chance. This can create holes for you, because if you're not careful, uh, you will have positions empty. They do not guarantee that you will get guys at whatever position that you need. I like Nelson Bryles better than Matt Wilcox, honestly, so I will go with these two players here. I've definitely got to add on to my pitching in the silver round. Andrew Chafin, he's set as a closer for some reason. Okay, we've got a pretty interesting dead ball pitcher there. Alex Wood, he's honestly a pretty solid option. I like him. Future legend Dane Dunning, also quite an intriguing card. Jose Altuve. I think I got to roll with two starting pitchers here. Definitely need to fill up that rotation as soon as we can with whatever options we can get. All right, on to the bronzes. Joe Moeller's a pretty good reliever. Steven Matz is a pretty good starter, actually. Not reliever, starter. He has the stamina. He has the pitches. I 
really all I need at this point is pitching and a utility infielder. So I think I'm taking Toussaint. No, I want Muller because he's actually a pretty good reliever. I'll take Muller and Mats. Mats is probably the last pitcher I'll need in my rotation. And then I can figure out the rest. Definitely need a lot of relievers, though. I only have two at this point. Setting Mats to a starting pitcher here. It would be nice if we could get a utility infielder sometime soon, but I'm not really going to push it if I don't have to. If this guy's good, I'll take him. All right, well, he's got the hitting. I guess we can use him as a utility infielder. And a pitcher. I think this Steve Wilson is probably the best option left. And now I'm pretty much just um, filling in my team's pitching with whoever the best options left are. I will also say, because this is very important and uh, will affect your play, that as you learn cards, it's going to get much easier to make decisions in perfect draft. A lot of what I'm doing right here is dependent on what I know about previous games of OTP rather than what I actually know about this game. So that's going to mean my decisions are not necessarily quite as good as they could be. And I'm really just hoping that things work out and are similar enough that I can win, which I have not done so far, by the way. I've been very unsuccessful in my perfect drafts up to this point. Uh, that could partially be because I'm not setting my rosters, which is, of course, something that will help you uh, gain a higher win rate. But, yeah. And now I get five irons to finish this one up, so I'm probably going to take one more hitter. Santiago Espinal is a pretty good super utility guy. And just some pitchers to finish this one. Doesn't look like we really have any more uh, half-decent even pitchers, which is unfortunate. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with my last pitching, so I think I'll just give it to uh, Hoel Finch. So there we have it. That's perfect draft, you guys. So those are the rounds. You can go back and count them yourself. I, I'm i not so good with the counting. I haven't done it yet. I am going to confess I'm just lazy to the point where I have not actually counted how many of each round you have. But... Building a balanced team is definitely something you should prioritize. Be sure to jump at players when you see guys who stand out among their competition in a specific round, and also at guys who fill a spot that you think is going to be difficult to pick up, especially when they do it well, or get a, provide a skill that you think is going to be tough to have. For example, a rangy center fielder like Jim Edmonds, or a high-ability catcher like Charles Johnson. And looking back on it, I probably uh, should have gone with, um, why can I not remember his name? Whatever that shortstop was, because Lindor is not as good by a mile, and Bob Boone is not that much worse than Charles Johnson. So we'll leave it at that for the perfect draft, and I'll just go over some of the things our imperfect team right now. It's a beta. A lot of things are sure to change, but I'll give you a brief glance at what it's going to look like for the actual season for PT22 here. Something else I will point out as it's loading is you got to notice how fast it's loading. Guys, it's supported on 64-bit, which for those of you who are frustrated by it running much slower than it should, it now runs as fast as it should on your computer. OTP is much cleaner now that it's on 64-bit. Uh, Definitely going to be huge. So right now, the missions, they've got a points-based system, which is really cool. So essentially, each card is given a value where uh, higher cards by rarity are given a higher value. 
and you collect cards once you get enough that reaches past whatever the point value is then you can claim the mission and get the reward which in these cases for the name game missions and that's all they have out is just a single standard pack but still really cool and really interesting mechanic i'm definitely looking forward to trying this out throughout the season Perfect Team has, of course, also got the new strategy changes that were implemented to the base game. I didn't mention these in the base game, and uh, that's because I'm mentioning them here. So, not only do you have the ability to set these in more positions, where you now have large trail, small trail, close, small lead, or large lead, and then different sets early, late, and last, whereas this was just uh, a little bit different in previous games. You can also now have more options for your defensive substitutions and such. They did, however, take away the option to base your lineups on uh, followers rather than openers, which basically means that the opener strategy is broken now. But that does not matter. It's uh, irrelevant because I'm not the one giving advice on that here. I'm just talking about stuff so we now have outfield shifts and infield shifts separated rather than just use of shifts there is also shifts of outfield depth uh, i believe there's an infield depth thing somewhere maybe i'm wrong yet yeah, play infield in that would be infield depth and you can now play the corners in specifically you can now guard the lines i'm pretty sure that's just going to protect against doubles and such but who knows and yeah, just a lot of really cool new options. You could set uh, favoring lefties versus righties for batters and pitchers. Very useful mechanic there. So if you have a lot of batters with heavy splits, but not pitchers with heavy splits, you can have your batters be more uh, platoon favored, but your pitchers be less platoon favored. And of course, the new card art and everything, really awesome. So... Live cards, you got guys like Steven Strasburg, Joe Jimenez, and a lot of other options here where you could just see how cool the new things are. You go to historical cards, and you've got a lot of really cool looking stuff here as well. So you've got guys like uh, Tom Dixon, Joe Jecker, I think Jose Jimenez is historical. Yep. Future legends, of course, look really cool. So guys like Logan Gilbert, who's my only one at this point, are amazing. By the way, just an early trend, uh, Future Legends are some of the best cards in the games. So that's really interesting. I don't know if that's going to continue into the cycle or not, but a lot of really cool and really good Future Legends at this stage. Uh, I'm trying to find somebody. Here we go. Here's an older card. Yeah, so they have very much era-themed uh, art at this point. Really cool. I would recommend everybody check out Perfect Team at least a little bit, even if you're not actually interested in it that much. Just check it out, see it, and um, Perfect Draft is really cool. So that's pretty much it for this video. I will give you guys updates on the game as we go through. Uh, as I learn more things, I will definitely be making more videos about the game and the new mechanics, especially things like coaching and such. Uh, I will be making actual player rankings which is something no one's ever done before for live cards but uh, i will be sometime in the very near future creating rankings based on live cards for each position based on how good i think each player is so i will have uh one year rankings so how good i expect that or how good i think that player is in one year um middle term rankings which is like three four years how good is each player and long-term rankings which is just how good are these players going to be in the far future how good are they going to be for your organization as a whole i also have prospect rankings so be sure to stay tuned for those they should be really useful tools in helping to identify top players of course it will come down to your own preference but it should be useful if you guys are interested in joining my Discord for OTP22 discussion, real baseball discussion, or just keeping up on the game, I will post that link in the description. I hope you guys all love this game as much as I do. It is really cool. For those of you playing beta and those of you anticipating the official release on Friday, I bid you good luck and enjoy it. And as for me, I'm going to go do some of that right now.